Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Okay, I'm joking, welcome to my co lecture. My name is Zandi Lekulati, I'm from Cape Town and I have a BTEC in Environmental Management that I obtained at CPUT. Today I'll be taking you through plate tectonics. So with the hierarchy of model, we learned about the earth being too cold and we learned about it being too hot and then until it got to the right temperature. We also learned about atmospheric and ocean circulation and right now this is where we are and in this talk we'll be talking about plate tectonics as I have mentioned. So we have our graph here and on our y-axis we have temperature in degrees Celsius and then on our x-axis we have years. In our previous talk, we learned that from present up until to 3 million years ago, um, the Milankovitch cycle is what is responsible for what was happening. But this talk aims to answer why was there a drop in temperature. So we are going to look at the Earth from the outside. We are going to look at the Earth on the inside, that it's got the core, the mantle and the crust. We are also going to learn that um, continents drift and how they drifted, what caused them to drift. We are also going to learn that how the how, con how continental drifting makes the Earth habitable. So this is the Earth as we know it from the outside. It's red, and this is the Earth on the inside. It's got the core, the mantle, and the crust. So the core it has the inner core and the outer core, and then it's got the mental and the upper mental so this is the mental this is the upper mental and then we have the crust and then there's the crust we on the crust we have the oceanic crust and the continental crust so that's the oceanic crust and that's the continental crust so now we know what the earth looks like from the outside we know what it looks like on the inside now let's learn what plate tectonics is do we know what plate tectonics is maybe maybe not but i'm here to tell you either way so plate tectonics is a theory that explains the earth's structure that the earth's crust is cracked and fragmented and the fragments are called plates and these are the plates that um used to move and are still moving and then how did this all happen or where did it all began. Alfred Wegener is well known for his theory of continental drifting, which states that continents drift and still continue to do so, but at the beginning they, they used to fit like a puzzle. So if we look at this diagram on A, 225 million years ago, it used to be, you know, it used to fit like a puzzle, and that's the Pangaea. And then on B, we have um our two fragments which is Laurasia and Gondwana land which is 135 million years ago and then on C which is 65 million years ago we have America North America we have South America we have Eurasia Africa India Madagascar Australia and Antarctica and currently we have all these fragments which are our continents so what, um, what, what, what evidence is there to show that indeed the continents drift? So the evidence that was provided by Alfred Wegener is that of the puzzles of the continents fitting like a puzzle. So if you look at South America and Africa, they fit like a jigsaw puzzle if they are put together. And then glacial sheets and distribution as well is also one of the evidence that Alfred Wegener provided. As you can see, India, Australia, Antarctica, Africa, and South America have glacial sheets, which shows that they used to be together at some point. And also distribution of fossils, where um, same fossils are found on different continents, which is also evidence. As well as geological evidence, which is such as rocks, um, which shows um, that indeed we find the same rock types or same rock belts. Um, in different continents, which is also evidence that indeed the continents used to be together. So we know that continents drift. However, we don't know what causes these continents to drift. That's where Arthur Holmes steps in. Arthur Holmes was a geologist who is well known for his theory about convection cells, which states that um, the up and down movement 
or there's the there's convection that occurs at the earth's mantle which is caused by the up and down movement of the magma how does that occur so as the inner core or the core heats up the magma the hot magma which becomes less dense when it's hot it moves up to the crust of the earth and then the it, when it gets to the top it cools down so the cooler one it sinks so that movement of hot magma moving up and the cool one moving down is then the cause of these plates to move um, either away or towards each other or the pull and push force so that's what actually causes them so that circular motion of um, circular movement or motion of convection is called convection cell and then that's figure one that i've just explained so figure two explain um, is, 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 is a simpler way to explain this concept so if you boil um, a pot of water the stove or the heat heats up the cold water then as the water becomes hotter the hot water moves to the top of the pot where it gets to the top and then it cools and then it sinks down again so that movement that's that's that that's the movement that causes then the the plates to move okay so we learned that the, the 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 continents drift and we also learned that they are caused by convection cells so now the question we need to answer is how do they drift figure three shows us that they drift towards each other and then figure four shows that they drift away from each other and then from figure five we can see that they move past each other or they slide past each other and then when they are moving towards each other it's called convergent plate boundaries there are three types of convergent plate boundaries and that's what I'm going to take you through right now. The first one which is shown on figure 6 is oceanic continental um, convergence. So that's when um, the oceanic crust is moving towards a continental crust. So I'm going to show you, by I'm going to illustrate by these two uh, materials on my hand. This is the oceanic crust. We are assuming that it's the denser one and this is the continental crust so it's not dense so they are going to move towards each other and because this one is dense when they collide the dense one will sink beneath the less dense one and that's what happens in oceanic and continental crust and then the second one which is shown in figure seven is oceanic oceanic and that's when two oceanic crusts move towards each other and then because there's also going to be a more denser one than the other. So again, this one is the more denser one. This one is the less denser one. So because this one is more dense, that means that it's cooler than this one. So as they come and collide, as they move towards each other and collide, again, the more denser one will sink beneath the less denser one. And when that happens through the sinking, then um, the magma will find a way to escape. And that's how volcanic eruptions occur the third way the third um, type of conversion plate boundary is continental continental so that's when two continental crusts move towards each other so these are both continental crusts and because there's no less dense and more dense so when they move towards each other they collide and they move up which then leads us to our next slide which is the formation of mountains so um, one of the effects that is caused by convergent plate boundary is the formation of if, uh, of mountains. As you can see on figure 9, those are mountains that are a result of continental continental drifting. And then figure 10 is a, an illustration of volcanic eruptions. As I said, that um, magma finds a way to escape when, when, when there's collision between these two plates. So volcanic eruptions are also an effect that happens at convergent plate boundary. Figure 11 is an example of a trench. So trench formation is also one of the things that will occur during convergent plate boundary. And then the second type of plate boundary is divergent plate boundary. So this is simply when plates are moving away from each other. So there are no types like the convergent. It's just divergent when they are moving away from each other. And when these plates move away from each other, volcanic eruptions occur as shown in figure 12. But look at figure 12 and see the difference between figure 12 and figure 10. So in figure 10, the volcanic eruption is different from that of figure 12. 
because the plates are moving away from each other then there's more space for the magma to come out so there's like you know it's very easy for volcanic eruptions to occur but also not only volcanic eruptions are the effect of divergent plate boundary but um, the formation of lakes is also one of the things that occur during this um, plate movement and then the third one is transform plate boundary and that's when plates slide past each other or move past each other like that um, yes that's it and then what happens as a result of that is that faults are formed as shown in figure 14 that is a fault because then the the, the, the earth's crust gets to be disformed a bit and then figure 15 is um, a result of building destroyed by earthquakes so shallow earthquakes are also a result of um, transformed plate boundary right so we then now know that the earth is round on the outside and we know that on the inside it's got the core the metal and the crust we also learned that the earth um the the, the plates do drift and that is caused by convection cells and we also learned how they actually get to drift which is a way to walk and pass each other so now we are going to see how that movement of plates causes the earth to be habitable so when plates move land is distributed right so that land distribution contributes to favorable climatic conditions which make it possible for earth for life to exist on earth and also um, the formation of new minerals which is through um, the formation of new rocks when plate tectonic occurs because that is vital for chemical reactions and also through volcanic eruptions greenhouse gases are formed and such as carbon dioxide and water so that also contributes to the earth being habitable and then we get back to this graph we spoke about this graph in the beginning when we started the talk and now we're back at it as i've said that the y-axis is temperature in degrees celsius and then the x-axis is years so now we want to understand what caused the drop right in temperature and then if we look at these three maps right so the first one is 250 million years ago and we can see that the continents were were, to, were were close together and then 100 million years ago we can see that there was a drift and then 50 million years ago we see that there was more drifting so that drifting is what caused the drop in in temperatures maybe your question is how so as the drifting occurs, then the it, it impacts or it affects the distribution of heat and air by the oceans. And that's what causes the drop. So in simple terms, the drop in the temperatures was caused by plate tectonics. Maybe you're asking why is South Africa a special place? South Africa is a special place because we are located on an inactive plate boundary, meaning there is less chance of us to experience plate tectonics. But even if we were to experience, even if it were to be said, oh, now the plate has become active, it wouldn't be happening soon for us who are alive now to experience it because geological processes take long to occur. So it would happen in million years because um continents drift um at a very slow pace which is one to two centimeters a year so that's a very slow process so we wouldn't live long enough to experience that and also we have had recent earthquakes in 2019 october kzn experienced a tremor and then september and november 2019 the western cape also experienced earthquakes and then in July 2021, Johannesburg experienced earthquakes. So in as much as we are not in a, on an active plate boundary, um, we have had experiences where we experienced earthquakes. Right, so from the talk, we learned that the earth is round on the outside. Then on the inside, we learned that there's the crust, we have the mantle, and we have the core. And then we also learned that Alfred Wegener is the one who came up with the concept of the theory of continental drifting and he further 
supported by providing the evidence. Um, and then we saw that other homes got to explain how the plates move and what causes them to move. And just now we just learned that um, distribution of land, the formation of rocks and also the formation of greenhouse gases through volcanic eruptions uh, makes the earth habitable. So that's how plate tectonics contributes to how the earth becomes habitable. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Do you have any questions?